so hello everyone uh, welcome to this uh, new video so this video would be the last video of this module okay where we are going to cover the concepts of uh, multiplexers and the quick summary between cmos and nmos uh, uh, transistor uh, logic and uh, we have some of the uh, 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 syllabus which is pending from module 1 which are which i'm going to cover it in the later part that is required for module 3 that one is the structural representation and the physical representation of the, uh, uh, an inverter and some of the basic circuits using layout form. Okay, That uh, layout form is also repeated in module 3. So that's why I am not going to do that in uh, this module. So in this now, this will be our final topic of uh, related to multiplexers. Okay. And uh, D latch and D flip flops. Okay. So multiplexers, D latch, D flip flops. I am going to cover it in this video. And all, along with that, the quick summary and we are going to wind up this module. Okay. So, what now are the concepts discussed in this module till now? So, those are uh, read there in the syllabus also. Uh, according to that only I have made the videos. Please, uh, those who have not watched it and those who are new to this video, I suggest you to watch those videos because it is uh, uh, well explained and you will be understanding it very well. Okay. So, once watch it and try to understand it because it, those uh, concepts which I have discussed are very, very important ones. So, now let us continue with the, today's video. Today, we are going to discuss with the multiplexers. Okay. Multiplexers are key components in CMOS memory elements and data manipulation structures. Okay. A multiplexer chooses the output to be one of the several inputs based on the select lines. Okay. Whatever the select lines, we know that we have uh, different, different select lines. So if it's a 2 is to 1 mux, we have uh, 2 select lines. If we have a uh, 4 is to 1 mux, we have 4 select lines. Okay. Like that. So basically, a 2 input or a 2 is to 1 mux chooses input D0. When the input select line is 0 and input D1 when the select line is 1. Okay. So, according to this, the multiplexers are the key components in CMOS memory elements in manipulation of data. That is, the variation in data would be controlled using these multiplexers according to the user, whatever the data is provided, right? That output, whatever is the uh, 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 whatever is there, right? If it does not satisfy the user, it could be varied. So that's why we are using these multiplexers. Okay. A multiplexer chooses the output to be one of the several inputs. Okay. Uh, based on the inputs, it will be providing the output. Okay. That output will be getting chosen uh, uh, according to the uh, input signals which are based on the select line signals. Okay. So, this is a basic uh, layout of a multiplexer you could see here. Okay. Where when select line is 0 and 1, which are the uh, when input is 0, what are the select lines are which are getting selected? Okay, when it is 0, D0 is selected and when it is 1, D1 is selected. So, this is a 2 is to 1 mux using transmission gate you could see here. So, I have drawn using transmission gate the circuit here. Okay. So, here you could see the circuit here. This, uh, this is a single transmission gate where I have used. Okay. To represent uh, a single uh, input that is uh, a single transmission gate which is the input is D0 and here we have one more transmission gate that is D1. And where these two terminals are uh, attached, and this is the S bar, and this is Y. So let us see the working here. So when N S is equal to zero, S bar would be equal to one since it is co com uh, complement to each other. Okay. So that's why hence only one transistor is linked with the D not turns, uh, is linked with the uh, uh, D not turns on, and the input D not would be available passed on to the output. Okay. So that's why see here when D not is turned turned on. Uh, S, S equal to 0, whatever is there in D0 would be passed on to the output Y because this is an open switch. Okay, when this is open switch, uh, here no current will be flowing here, so that's why from here to here only the output would be getting cracked. Okay, the transistors connected to D1 are off. Okay, but similarly, when S equal to 1, the same thing. So here now the this transistor D0 transistor is off, that is open switch. So, this would be getting activated. Whatever is there at D1, that would be equal to Y. Same thing when S equal to 1, S bar would be equal to 0. Hence, only the transistors linked with D1 would be turning on and the input D1 would be passed on to the output. Okay, the transistor connected to D0 is off. So, this is a basic working of a uh, 2 is to 1 mux uh, using transmission gate. Uh, using this, you could be drawing even 4 is to 1 mux. Okay, where we are connecting these two transistors. Okay. And the outputs are connected uh, and from the outputs we are drawing one two is to one mux and from that we are taking one more output. 
that also could be drawn very easily using these two transmission gates okay so if in, if in case they ask uh, use uh, uh, to, to implement the 4 is to 1 mux using transmission gates this functioning you should be mentioning uh, mentioning uh, along uh, with them because this is the working of a 2 is to 1 mux so like that you should be drawing for two separate instances where we are having four select lines and uh, from the outputs you should be drawing one more 2 is to 1 mux so in total we are drawing three 2 is to 1 muxes for to represent a 4 is to 1 mux as shown here in the below see here so this is an example for 4 is to 1 mux here larger multiplexers can be built from multiple two two input multiplexers for example 4 is to 1 multiplexer okay so see here this is one 2 is to 1 mux this is one 2 is to 1 mux and this is from the outputs provided one more 2 is to 1 mux is drawn okay so totally we have four select lines and uh, four input combinations that is s1 s0 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 which are the select lines which are getting selected d0 d1 d2 d3 okay Similarly, we could be working or uh, do the working for this also using transmission gates as I have told you. Okay, which are the signals would be getting passed that also could be done. Okay, so this was about completely about uh, multiplexers. It's working with uh, according to the uh, usage of transmission gates and uh, select lines when uh, which when when one when one select line is selected, the output uh, S bar would be equal to the inverse of that. That is zero. If it is zero, it is one, and one it is zero. According to that, the transistors are switched and whichever transistor is open is in a closed state that this when, whenever the switch is open, uh, that transistor will not be coming into the picture and uh, that select line would be getting automatically cancelled. Which select line is active from that only the output is. Okay. So, this was about the multiplexers. One example of 4 is to 1 mux also I have discussed here. So, that's all. So, now we are having one more concept that is latches and flip flops okay latches and flip flops basically we are going to study here the concept of d latch and d flip flop okay a d latch can be built by using one two input multiplexer and two inverters as shown below okay so here they have used one two is to one multiplexer okay and two invert using these two uh, these components you could be building a, a simple d latch circuit as shown here okay so this is the circuit diagram of a D latch, okay, where they have used one two is to one multiplexer and two inverters. Why they have used two inverters? Because uh, according to the condition of D latch, whatever is the uh, D means data, right? Whatever is provided data, okay, that only would be your corresponding output, right? So that's why if we want to get back our output, for example, if we data is zero, since we have two inverters, if, if it passes through one inverter, the output would be uh, inverted that is 0, uh, inverted of 0 that is 1, right. So, we want back our data that is we want back our 0 for that for that case again it is given through an inverter again, this is 1 here, okay. If it passes through the inverter the output would be for correspondingly 0. So, that is why we are getting back our data with these two inverters which are used, okay. So, this is optional here in case of uh, uh, 2 is to 1 mux we are using. So, that is why this Q is coming into the picture. Okay, so this is a basic circuit diagram of a D latch using two inverters to get back our input. Okay, so these are the explanations here. It consists of a data input D, a clock input uh, CLK, and a true complementary uh, outputs Q and Q bar. So when uh, clock is equal to one, the Q would be equal to D, and Q bar would be equal to D bar. Okay. When clock the signal is equal to 1, but when clock signal is equal to 0, a feedback path around the inverter pair is established. Okay, a feedback path around the inverter pair that is, we want to get back, fetch back our data, right? That's why when clock signal is not activated, we, we use the condition of two inverters and we get back our inputs. Okay, so that's what they have mentioned here. See, here, a feedback path around the inverter pair is established to hold the current state of. Q okay. For example, when clock equal to 1, see here D equal to 1, the uh, we would be getting whatever is there in D that only would be getting here in Q and Q bar that is D bar would be equal to 0. But again, if you want to pass through these two inverters here, we would be getting back our input as 1 itself. So, see here, so here it is 0, right? So, here if we if here it is 0 now, it if it passes through the inverter and we get the output as 1 here, so which is the provided input that is d equal to 1 okay 
So that's why it passes through this inverter and we'll be getting back our input of 1 itself. Similarly, when clock equal to 0, again the same thing. So see here, the clock is 0 and from the 0, the Q is 1, Q bar equal to D bar that is 0. So now the 0 is get, uh, zero is here, it is it passes through the inverter. Now here the output is 1, that 1 is fetched back okay, to the given date. Okay? i.e. When, when clock is equal to 0, previous state is maintained. This is one uh, difference which you need to be knowing. We can construct the multiplexers using the transmission gates as shown in the figure. Okay? So this is one diagram which I have already told you you could be doing using multiplexers, transmission gates, one example I have done. So this is one more example here. Okay? So this uh, is a simple example of a D flip-flop where they have, we have constructed the circuit of uh, uh, D flip-flop using transmission gates. Okay? So in case if they ask D flip-flop using transmission gates, this is the circuit diagram you could be noting down. Along with the working they have mentioned here, that is when the clock signal is 1 and D is 1, then what is what would be the state in the output side? That is Q would be equal to 1. Okay? Because when D is 1, the same signal is passed through Q. So D would be equal to Q only and Q bar would be equal to 0. So if you want to fetch back our input, so you should be passing through the inverter again to get back our input 1. Again, when clock is 0, again the same thing they have mentioned using transmission gates. Okay. So go through these very important ones. Okay. If you didn't understand, pause the video and refer it. So these were the complete uh, concepts of uh, D latch as well as D flip flops along with the multiplexer concept. Okay. So hope uh, this thing is clear. So now let us discuss the final summary of uh, this module. That is a quick summary of CMOS and MOS. Okay, what are the what and all are the parameters which we could be fetching and uh, what things which you need to be which you, which you should be remembering and everything. Okay, let us discuss a quick summary of CMOS and MOS. Okay, first is logic levels. Okay, fully restored logic i.e. output settles at VDD or VSS, output does not settle at ground, hence the degraded noise margin is generated in case of NMOS. Transition times, rise and fall times are of the same order, but rise and fall times are inherently slower. Rise time is inherently slower than the fall time. In case of CMOS summary, the rise and fall times would be nearly equal to each other. It won't be having any alteration in between. But here in case of NMOS, the rise time is very slow than the fall time. Transmission gates, one more parameter, transmission gate passes both logic levels well, that is the output transmission gate can be used to drive the input of other transmission gate. But here in case of NMOS, pass transistor transfers logic 0 well, but logic 1 is degraded. Okay, pass transistor cannot drive the gate of the second pass transistor in case of NMOS theory. Next is power dissipation, almost zero static power dissipation, but here in this case the power with output of the given rate equal to 0, power dissipated in the circuit in addition to the power dissipated during the logic transition. Okay. Then we have a few more uh, points here. If you want, you can pause the video and refer it out. Okay. So this is a quick summary of what and all of the concepts we have discussed. Okay. So these uh, things are not, if you want, you can pause the video and refer it. I'm not going to read it again. These things are, all, uh, are uh, simply theory based and uh, it's uh, not required. So, which and all are required, those things I have told you. So, this was about the module 1. With this, we have uh, completed the uh, fully the module 1. Some of the concepts are pending that is related to structural representation and uh, physical representation that is uh, through layouts, layout transition model. Those things are pending. I know that that layout for uh, layout uh, syllabus is there, right? That is repeated in the third model. Okay, so that's why I'm, I plan to do it together. So that's why in there only I'm going to discuss about structural representation as well. So these things which I've covered till now are very, very important ones. And if you study this much, it is well and good to score good marks from this module in the exam point. Okay, so that's all guys. I've tried to cover as much as possible from module one from my side. Now it's your side to see these videos thoroughly. Try to understand each and every concept of this video, okay, and uh, grasp some knowledge because this is a fundamental of the upcoming modules which you need to be knowing, okay. 
this module is the basic so that's why please uh, watch these videos guys we have taken a lot of effort to these videos to provide notes materials and all so these things materials and all we are going to provide in the description as well please go access it from the description nothing much to do guys we are going to provide a link okay you just copy that link in the description one link is there just copy it in the chrome browser open it if you have already subscribed that other tab you should be keeping it open in the recent tab recent okay go to that if you have already subscribed come back to that page the link would be automatically open go and access the notes okay if you are not subscribed directly if you open that link you will be getting the uh, steps okay yeah that's all guys please keep supporting like share subscribe to our channel thank you